So uh, hi everybody. Uh, today is uh, is Wednesday, is Wednesday, so it's the uh, historical uh, series. So um, as mentioned last week, uh, this is going to be a special uh, series. Okay, uh, we've done already three parts of the first series, and now we are doing a, a special one. Uh, we are still in the Middle Ages and the very interesting period of the birth and uh, consolidation of the Portuguese kingdom and its independence from the Moors and the powerful kingdom of Leon and Castile. We have learned about the king, the first king of Portugal, King Afonso Henriques, in 1139, his incredible mother, Rainha Teresa, who he himself defeated in 1128. And we also learned about uh, King Jean I, who in 1385 defeated the Castilian army at the Battle of uh, Aljubarrota and really consolidated the fragile independence of Portugal. Uh, together with his marriage with Philippa of Lancaster, sister of the future King Henry IV of England, here already witnessing the profound bond and alliance between uh, Portugal and England. This week, we are going to continue covering that period with two very um, special episodes. First, the almighty military order of Christ and its origins, which is really a unique and fascinating episode in the long story of Portugal. And if we have time, the amazing story of the city of Coimbra, uh, very powerful at these times of the Middle Age and Renaissance. Okay. So, first, the order of Christ and its origin. I, I mean, we, we could spend the whole day speaking about it. There is so much to, to there is so much history and, and amazing history. And actually, check the Facebook and the YouTube channel because I will put some videos there, okay, to, um, uh, to, to have a bit more uh, information uh, from everything I'm going to tell you now. So, ch check it out, okay? So I will try to condense in the best and clearest possible way uh, this amazing episode. Uh, in short, the military order of Christ was founded in 1318 in Portugal as the continuation of the Templars, the, the Knights, following their suppression in 1312. The order of Christ was established by King Denis of Portugal, whom we spoke about last week, who negotiated with Pope Clement's successor, Jean uh, XXII, the recognition of the new order and its right to inherit the Templars' assets and property. I mean, very, very uh, vast property and very rich uh, assets. Pope Clement, of course, uh, was the, the Pope who had put an end to the Templar Knights, nice, as we will see uh, later on. The order was then secularized in 1789, dissolved in 1910, then revived in 1907 within the Portuguese Republic, headed by the President of Portugal, as a decoration in recognition of outstanding services to the state. Uh, still today, still today uh, the government gives that award, that um, uh, decoration. So the Order of Christ, as awarded by the Portuguese government still today, comes in five classes, the Grand Cross, the Grand Officer, the Commander, the Officer, and finally the Knight or Dame. Okay? But let's go back to its source and its origin because this is where it's really fascinating. For that, we have to go back to the Templars. So now we're talking about the Templars, whose order was fund funded much earlier, around 1118, in Jerusalem, and soon formed commanderies around Europe to fight and defeat the Muslim. We, we, were, we were really here in the middle of the Middle Age, uh, uh, sorry, of the Crusades and the Middle Age. The Templars settled in Portugale, at least from 1122, in the region of Braga, where the order received successive donations and where they also bought lands. So they were already um, within the county of Portugal before Portugal became independent. So this occurred only two or three years after the foundation in Jerusalem 
and about seven years before their recognition and confirmation at the Council of Troyes. The Templars also received lands donated by uh, Dona Teresa, the mother of Afonso Henriques, in 1126, few years before, as we have seen, Portugal became a fully independent kingdom. So, as I just said, uh, the Templars were already in the country of Portugal before the independence. So Portugal was the first country in Europe where the Templars settled in. And that, uh, that, that's a bit of a surprise for me because I always thought the Templars were French, but actually they came first in Portugal. So Don, Don Gualdim Paix, the provincial master of the Order of the Temple in Portugal, constructed the Covento de Cristo in 1160 in Tomar, very important place at these times in Portugal and Europe. There is a story that uh, the lot where he, built, where he built it was part of a small chain of seven elevations, which became known as the City of Seven Hills, as a clear rapprochement with the Seven Hills of Jerusalem, the Seven Hills of Rome, or the Seven Columns of Constantinople. Okay? The Covento de Cristo is a testament to the Templar's architectural abilities, the octagonal church was inspired by the Islamic Dome of the Rock shrine in Jerusalem, used by the Templars as their base of operation. And the Dome of the Rock is actually located on the Temple Mount, where the Temple of Jerusalem stood prior to its destruction in 70 before Jesus, uh, after Jesus Christ. And the Templars believed the Dome of the Rock was a remnant of the ancient ancient temple for which their name derives. Okay? The Covento, and that Covento in uh, Toma was actually the first place I visited uh, when we moved to Portugal in 2000. And this is a place really, if you have time, you, uh, you have to go, uh, you must visit. It's about an hour and a half drive from Lisbon, but very much worth it. Um, so when you book your stay here, just add it in the booking form other remarks if you wish to visit it, okay? Uh, but let's go back to uh, the story of the Order of Christ, okay? Um, so in 1190, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pronounce that, uh, Yacoub al-Mansur, the king of Morocco, led siege to the Templars in Tomar. This test of strength confirmed the Templars' military power and established them really as an indispensable presence in the defense of northern Portugal. So that was the Templar. Paij, who built the Covento in, in Tomar, died in 1195 after ruling for more than 50 years. So, now jumping a few years ahead, heavily swayed by Philip IV of France, Pope Clement had the nice Templar annihilated throughout France and most of Europe on charge of heresy. But the Portuguese king, Denis I, refused to pursue and persecute the former knights, as had occurred in all the other sovereign states under the political influence of the Catholic Church. So that's really the main, the, the most important thing. So, um, and so Denis revived the Templars of Tomar as the Order of Christ, largely, largely for they had during the Reconquista, the Reconquest, and in the reconstruction of Portugal after the wars. As mentioned earlier, Denis negotiated with Clement's successor, Jean XXII, the recognition of the new order and his right to inherit the Templar assets and property. So really, the Portuguese were there to save the, the, the Templars, which were completely uh, annihilated by the Pope Clement. And, um, you know, the, the few who escaped that... Uh, yeah, that extinction really. Uh, flew, fr um, some flew to Scotland and others to Portugal. Um, so King Denis created the Order of Christ in 1318, uh, really for the Templar Knights who survived their mass slaughter throughout Europe. So some historians would claim the Order of Christ was actually and essentially the Templars under a new name, while others see it as mostly as a mostly origin formation. Okay, slightly different. Um, so the Order of Christ was first seated at Castro Marim, we mentioned that in an earlier series, in the Algarve, 
and in 1357 the order was then moved to the town of Tomar, seat of the order of the Knights Templar in Portugal, as we have just seen. Okay, and it's it's quite fascinating. I mean, the, the, there's been so many books and so many uh, stories about it, and you know, so you will see. I've put some 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 um, videos. Uh, you know about a special uh, special treasure that they were defending i mean all kind of crazy stories about the templar but that's because they were secret so nobody knows really what they were for uh well we know that they were there to 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 protect the, the christians but um all sorts of other theories came came to light because they were secret um, so now moving into the golden age of discoveries, the order of Christ accumulated great riches and power during that period. And it's also through, thanks to them, that Portugal when, uh, was able to organize all those uh, voyages, all those journeys, but we'll, we'll get back to that. After 14, 1417 now, King Jean I of Portugal, the king who fought the Castilian army and married with Philippa of Lancaster, requested to the Pope that Prince Henry the Navigator in third son became the Grand Master of the Order of Christ. So that's where everything came together. I mean, Henry the Navigator was actually the, the Grand Master of the Order of Christ. I mean, I find it completely amazing. So using the Order of Christ money, Prince Henry organized a navigator school in Sagash, preparing the way for Portuguese supremacy. From there, the first great wave of expedition of the period of t discoveries were launched. And Henry's uh, impact on history is at the least uh, great, you know. Some even go as far as saying that he arguably sparked the European interest in colonial exploration that would so transform the world for the next four centuries. So, as you probably know, the cross of the Order of Christ adorned Portuguese sails in their travels to India, Brazil and Japan. And after Henry the Navigator, the Grand Mastership uh, was held by the royal family. Okay? So that's really a quick, uh, quick look at the uh, Order of Christ. And uh, I've got actually some key dates. Um, but uh, I will do another very, very small uh, video about those key days because um, this one is already a bit long. So, and I will actually post this chronology on the Facebook page. So have a look so you, ha you can have more time to digest it uh, because you will see there is quite a lot of information on that um, key date. Um, and you will see that on those dates, it, it really is a great uh, way to finish this first series because it's a great summary uh, which, which can conclude the first series. Uh, you, will, you will see that some of the dates refer to some of the episodes we've seen in the three parts of this first series. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I will do a quick, uh, so a quick video for the key dates, uh, but that's it for, for, for now. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. As usual, like, uh, like the video uh, if you have uh, liked it. Um, subscribe, uh, click the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, visit www.lisbonnaturally.com. Uh, go on the YouTube channel. There is a lot of videos and uh, videos that we have uploaded ourselves, but also other that I put there to, to give you a nice taste of, of Lisbon. Okay, so well, you'll see me uh, very shortly because I'm going to do that uh, a short video and post it probably the same day. Uh, okay, all right, thank, thank you and bye.